John Philip Sousa is going to play here next month. Would you like to come? Oh, yes, Nicholas. Well? Uh, wait a moment, Alona. There's something I'd like to say to you. Yes, Miklos. Ilona, your family has known my family for a very long time. And of course, I hold your family in the greatest esteem. I'm sure they feel the same way about you, Miklos. Yes. Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm not getting any younger. I'm almost 24, and I have to start thinking seriously about the future. I have uh, $2,000 saved, and... Ilona. Yes, Miklos? I love you, Ilona. Will you be my wife? Oh, of course, Miklos. Oh, Ilona. Oh. I'll, uh, talk to your father tomorrow. Now, what I would like to say, sir, is a result of very careful planning and a weighing of circumstances. Uh, I don't want you to think, sir, that this is a sudden impulse. Sir, what is it you are talking about, young man? You're walking around the subject like a cat around a dish of hot milk. Punch! Yes, sir. I'd like to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage, sir. Who is that all? Just to marry her. And what am I supposed to do? Kiss your hand in gratitude for your noble sacrifice? Am I supposed to say yes, please, take her, our most precious possession? But I love her, sir. Big achievement. Everybody loves her. But she loves me, too. She does? Well, that is a cabbage of a different flavor. If she loves you. You two out there, come on in. Do you love him? Yes, Papa. Robber you? No, Papa. But she's so young and me a child. She is 19, Yenny. I was 17 when I married you. But I was a grown-up, responsible man. I had a beard. You were 19, Yenny. Oh, I can grow a beard. Is it the beard? You keep out of this. Well, Magdushka, what do you say? Huh? Now, what kind of a cry is that? A yes cry or a no cry? It's a yes cry. <laughs> well, if they love each other, and if you say yes, then it should be with a big, happy smile. Oh, Papa! It should be with laughter, jubilation, and celebration. Come on, let's go into the house. Women set a table as you have never set one before. Get out the caviar, open a bottle of French champagne. What are you talking about, Papa? Caviar champagne, indeed. Bring out from the cellar a keg of fiery tokai wine, the king of things, and the drink of kings. What cellar, Papa? Just let me have some money and I get some nice table wine from the grocer. All right, all right. I have no money on me. Take it out of the cash register. I can't. I just paid the rent. Well, then charge it. Is he in your hand? It's not good for any amount. And get the best. Get your turn. All right, all right. That's all he carries. <laughs> hey, come on. Break it up. Don't just stand there making cow's eyes at each other. Come on, prepare the feast. Tonight we are going to have a big celebration. May God give you three ages. Health, happiness, and a home. And in that home may give you three C's. Contentment, cheer, and children. <laughs> uh, now, son, I don't care how many children you have, but I want a grandson for a purpose, a very special purpose. This case contains the destiny of the Reinitz family. An old Italian violin. For four generations, 
It has been in our family, together with wonderful talents. But never enough money to develop those talents. But we all played just the same, like gypsies. Yes, I remember. That's how your father stole my heart, with his violin. He used to serenade under my window every night. Remember? cry when I hear it. Am I playing that badly? You play very well, sir. Yeah, but that's nothing compared to how your son will play. I'm giving him the Reinitz talent. I'll give him the Reinitz violin. And you will give him the opportunity. You're a fine cabinet maker. We are in America, you will make money. Why, with your talent, you can be a cabinet maker like uh, Chippendale. And your son will be with my talent, a violinist like Chrysler. <laughs> Darling. You are dreaming again. Am I? Well, you shall see. You shall see. Oh, that must be my parents. Oh. Nancy! Mother, father, I I'd like you to meet the future Mrs. Miklos Horvath. Oh, I wish you every happiness, my dear. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Horvath. I am entitled to a kiss, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, Baylor. Let's have some wine. All right. Oh, come on, don't be bashful. Help yourself. Thank you. Uh, yeah. That's easy to eat. <laughs> Good, eh? Excellent. <laughs> There's the skin of your gums. <laughs> the Emperor Franz Josef eats a yard and a half every morning. <laughs> mm. Two young people in love. Isn't it wonderful? Love is all right. I can't say I like this. You know, children just coming and telling us they're going to get married. Well, uh, this is America. I prefer the old way. The parents should make all the arrangements. You don't know what you're talking about. What is there to arrange? I know what I'm talking about, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your daughter's dowry. Dowry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would not want to insult you with such an outlandish old world idea. Just insult me, Anu. Come on, insult me. Some of these outlandish old world ideas that have made America great, like freedom, equality, brotherhood, dowry. Of course, you can't afford it. What do you mean I cannot afford it? How much do you want? Just name it. Gender. Well, the Nemeths wanted Miklos to marry their daughter. They offered $1,500. Well, all right, $1,500 it is. must have been the wine. He had too much. Oh, Mother, why did he do such a thing? Maybe he can tell you. Mm. Nice people, the Horvaths. Oh, Ilona has made a wonderful match. Oh, Papa, how could you? You know we have no money for a dowry. Oh, I'll get it. Get it where? Oh, where, where, anywhere. I'll get it like this. From whom? Oh, from whom, from whom? Why, <laughs> from Mr. Franklin, for instance. At the bank? Well, where else? He knows me. Haven't I been delivering rolls to him for the last ten years? You don't even have an account. Account? What's so important about an account? Why, one word from me, and he'll swing his safe open and say, Mr. Reinitz, walk in and serve yourself. Oh, Yenne. Oh, Yenne. Oh, Yenne. You know what? I shall ask for two thousand. Yes, sir. And we shall have the biggest wedding. And Ilona will be the most beautiful bride, dressed in pure white silk, 
flowers all over church, an organ in the choir of Verdi. I'm afraid you won't be able to borrow money on this policy, Mr. Lannitz. It's, it's term insurance. Isn't there something more tangible you could offer as security? My bakery? It's a fine bakery, the best in the neighborhood. I know that you're a fine craftsman, Mr. Reinitz, but, well, I'm only an officer of the bank. What about the property? Do you own it? Not the building, all the fixtures, all the equipment, everything paid for. We don't consider that good collateral. I'll tell you what I can do since you're so hard up for money. I can let you have a couple of hundred dollars on an unsecured note. A couple of hundred dollars would do me no good, Mr. Franklin. I'm really very sorry. Don't be, Mr. Franklin. We Reinitz have somehow always managed to land on our feet. Good morning, Mr. Reinitz. Morning, Mr. Galvan. Broke a string again, maybe? No, just dropped in to take the weight off my feet. Uh -huh. Thanks. Ah, uh, it is not easy to earn your bread with bread, Mr. Galvan. <laughs> Perhaps it will be easier now. I've heard the good news about your daughter. Miklos is a fine boy. Oh, yes. And say, I heard about the dowry, too. Fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, Mr. Galvan. Yes. Can I speak to you in confidence? Of course, Mr. Reinitz. We're old friends. You buy violins, no? Well, I, I don't know. Business is bad. Today, young people are, are lazy. They don't know about anything but the gramophone and the player piano. My shop is overstocked with fiddles. I don't mean fiddles. Who is talking about the fiddle? I mean a violin. My violin. You want to sell it? Yes, but I don't want anybody to know it. Not even my family. Well, I... I don't know. How much do you want for it? Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred? The dowry. Yes, the dowry. Well, I, I, I'm afraid, Mr. Reinitz. Well, I... don't shake your head before you have seen it. Do you know what kind of a violin it is? A dream. Angels could use it in heaven. Hundreds of years old. A real Italian masterpiece. Why, for 1500 you'll find it a bargain. Well, I, I don't know. You will tomorrow. I'll bring it first thing in the morning. See you tomorrow. Did you see Mr. Franklin? Yes. He said he couldn't possibly let Papa have the money. It's going to break his heart. Yes, I know. His silly pride. To write in its name. You'd think they owned Hungary and donated to Emperor Franz Josef. Here he comes now. Smile. Hello, family. Hello, Papa. Hello, darling. How was business? Good, good. You know what? You are the two most beautiful women on both sides of 72nd Street. You seem to be in an exceptionally good mood today. Did you see Mr. Franklin? Well, of course I saw Mr. Franklin. What did he say? Well, uh, what could he say? Uh, Mr. Reinitz, uh, he said, my bank is at your disposal, he said. Did he give you the money? Well, of course not. Uh, the papers to be made out, contracts, receipts. Uh, two attorneys are working on them right now. I'll get the money tomorrow. Crisp new pills. Ah, I can smell them from here. But, Papa, I, I think you should start making the rules right now, Papa. It's almost noon. All right, all right, you slave driver, you. Yeah? What can you do? You push a button and he begins to dream. Well, he's got to wake up sooner or later. Let him dream a little longer. <laughs> well, yourself. Well, well, well. Look at Come them. How seriously they take that silly card game. 
Then our children. Your leave. Poor Papa. He's happy as a child. Maybe you were mistaken about the bank. No, I wasn't. Oh, now you know I don't care anything about the dowry. Now, I'll talk to your father and tell him that these things are no longer important. Oh, don't do that. It hurt his pride. Besides, he doesn't realize that I know. There must be something we can do. And now, give me that poor little orphan ace of yours. Well, luck, that's what you have. In a game of intelligence. All right, all right. You mean a quarter? Don't yeah. worry. And it is 32 cents, if you don't mind. Oh, so it is. <laughs> what luck. Do you mind if I cut? No, it is your privilege to distrust the better player. I'm only superstitious. <laughs> Deal. You like this game? Oh, I love it. Then why don't you learn it? You want to raise the stakes? Oh, thank you. I don't need any money. And speaking of money, you know, I have decided that our children should start their married life in their own home. What do you mean, you have decided? Am I not to be consulted? Are you trying to run their lives already? I found a house, a very good house for $3,000. I am prepared to pay half of it. This is my wedding present. Now, you can use the $1,500, uh, what you have for Ilona's dowry. Huh? It is uh, available, isn't it? Well, of course it is available. Anytime you want it. Good. Then you get, give it to me tomorrow night at the party. All right. Well, I say, ha! A double. <laughs> I redouble. And I re redouble. Hey. Oh. When? You said 1500 1500 I said. You're right. It's a masterpiece. I'll give you 1500 for it. Alien! Alien! <laughs> I mean, hooray, hooray! Here you are, Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Galvan, you don't know what that means to me. How can I ever thank you? You don't need me. No, no, I insist. Oh, I know. As long as I live, you will never pay for bread again. Every morning I shall deliver to you a loaf of rye with kumis. And two feet of strudel every Sunday. You can come out now. Thanks for your kindness, Mr. Galvan. I appreciate it. You're a good boy, Miklos. I know I broke my promise to your father-in-law not to tell anyone about the violin. But I just had to tell you. I don't have that kind of money, not even for a masterpiece. You mean it isn't? Well, it's a fine fiddle. Nice wood, good finish, it's worth a hundred, a hundred and fifty. But to him, it was worth more than anything else in the world, except his daughter's happiness. Come along, all of you. Oh, 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 you. Now, in Hungary, we drink to love and eternal friendship. Now, come on, come on. Hold up your glasses. Link your arms. No, 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 don't spill it. According to an old Hungarian superstition, that which gets spilled, you cannot drink. That would be a darn shame. Huh? <laughs> No, she can't to say servus, servus, say servus, 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 servus. I know, I know this is not the time to bring it up, but I think we should close the deal on the house first thing in the morning. Now, if you give me the money, you have it. Well, of course I have the money. Yenerein, it says something is so, then something is so. How much was it you wanted? A thousand? Fifteen hundred. What's the difference? A thousand, fifteen hundred? I don't understand it. Mr. Franklin at the bank definitely told well, me Well, perhaps that. your father went back and made Mr. Franklin change his mind. Because you know how your father can make people do anything. 
a wonderful man. Well, how does it feel to be landlords? Eh? <laughs> you are the best daddy in the whole world. Huh? <laughs> I saw the house this afternoon. A palace. They're in good health, children. Hey, what is this? All the glasses are empty, the party's dying. Come on, Miklos, fill them up. Well, it's empty. No wonder nobody's drinking, eh? <laughs> I'll go across the street and get some. Now, wait, I'll give you some money. Oh, no, 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 I'll take care of it. Oh, very generous boy you have, a real gentleman, eh? Like father, <laughs> like son. Eh? <laughs> Come on, let's have some more music. Ilona, put on another record. No, no, Yanu, wait, Ilonko. I have a better idea. Miklos tells us you are a real virtuoso. Uh, what do you mean, uh, virtuoso? On the violin. Oh, no, that is an exaggeration. Oh, come on, play for me. No, no, please, I've been practicing years. What is this, a miracle? A modest piano, Rani? No, no, really, I mean it. I, I just can't at all. Oh, of course you can, Papa. Come on, play. No. Well, all right, I'll tell you why I can't play. My why? fingers. I, I burned them when I was speaking the rules this morning. You didn't tell me. I can't see anything. It's the invisible kind, the flesh burns. Ah, stop <laughs> that nonsense. Nothing is wrong with your head. Come on, Papa, oh, play. Come on, you are a matter of it. Let's play. All right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll play for you. Fine. Oh. Okay. No key. I can't open my violin case. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, folks, but that's all. Ilona, put on another record. Wait, hold it just a minute. I bet I can open this case. No! Do you want to ruin this case? You know what kind of a case this is? It once belonged to Jan Kubelik. You know, I tell you something. I know why you don't want to play. I mean, the real reason. You do? Mm-hmm. Because you can't play. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can't, can't, eh? Huh? Why else wouldn't you? Why else, you're asking me? Mm-hmm. Why else? Why else? Well, all right, I'll tell you. Wait a moment, Mr. Reinitz. That key must be in the bag. No, no, it isn't there. No, it... no, I, I, I saw you putting it in there the other day. Here. Here it is, Mr. Reinitz. Here's your violin, Mr. Reinitz. All right, Paganini. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. Our friend, the Gypsy Baker, will give us a concert. Come here. It was you who paid for it. Yes, but nobody knows about it. Not even Alona. I smuggled it back this afternoon. After all, I wanted the violin to stay in the family for my son. You're the first man I've ever known to be for his wife's dowry. <laughs> Play the serenade, Papa. No, no serenade. The serenade is for someone to fall in love with you. But here, everybody loves everybody. Grab your partners. <laughs> 